Okay, we just got our Netduino. So let's make our first Netduino app. Go to the Start button, Programs, Visual Studio 2010 Express, and let's launch Visual C Sharp 2010 Express. When it starts here, let's create a new project. We click New Project, and we're going to make a Netduino app. Now, it's already selected, but if it wasn't, we can select Micro Framework under the Visual C Sharp category, and then Netduino app on the right side. Now let's name it. We're going to call it Blinky because we're going to blink an LED. We press OK and it creates our app. Now let's get started. On the right side, you see all the files inside of our project. Well, program.cs is our main code. So I just double clicked on that and it shows up over here. Most of the time, you're just going to write your code inside of main. But you can have multiple files in a larger project. Click underneath where it says write your code here. Now to control the LED, we need what's called an output port. An output port lets us set the voltage on a pin or on an LED on the Netduino, either high 3.3 volts or low 0 volts. Doing this will turn our LED on and off. We'll call this LED, and it's a new output port. Now we're going to type pins dot, and when I push the period, you'll see this nice list, which I can scroll down, of all the different pins on my Netduino. A are for analog, and D are for digital, and then at the end here, you'll see the onboard LED and switch. We're going to pick the LED, and if I double click on that, it'll automatically type it. The initial state is whether the LED is on or off. False is off. True would be on. We'll start with the LED off. Now we want to blink the LED. We want to turn it on and off repeatedly. The easiest way to create a loop to do things over and over again is to use while true. We can explain this in detail later, but basically anything inside the parentheses is evaluated to see if it's true. It could either be an expression or just the word true. Because it's the word true, this loop will never end. Inside of these curly braces is our code for the loop. Our first bit of code is to turn the light on. So we say LED write true. This turns the light on. Then we're going to sleep for 250 milliseconds to leave the light on for a bit. Then we'll turn the light off with LED write false. And again, we'll sleep for another 250 milliseconds. Add these together and we get half a second. So the light should blink on and off twice a second. We're done. Let's run our program. Now by default, Visual Studio uses what's called an emulator for the micro framework. A lot of professional software developers want to get started on their programs before their hardware arrives, so they use the emulator. In our case, we already have our hardware. There's no need to use the emulator. So let's switch to using real hardware. We go to Project, up top, and select Properties. On the left side, we pick the .NET micro framework category and then here you see the deployment device. By default it's the emulator. We're going to change the transport to USB because our Netduino is plugged in via USB. Our device already shows up here because our Netduino is plugged in. If it weren't, go ahead and plug it in now. If it doesn't show up, just change it back to emulator and then back to USB again and you'll see your device. Now let's close this to make sure that Visual Studio recognizes our changes. And now let's run the program. Up at the top you see a play button. It says start debugging. You can also press F5. When we press this, our Netduino app will be deployed to our Netduino and start running automatically. It's pretty quick. Let's do it now. I'm going to press the button. And you see down here, it's deployed and it's rebooting. And now it's running. Alright, let's see what's happening on the Netduino. And there we have our blinking light. That's it. We've made our first Netduino app. Thanks for watching.